welcome back, everybody. We're looking out live at Seattle's waterfront where the Alaskan Way Viaduct's days are numbered, like basically over. Tomorrow night, the viaduct closes permanently so crews can realign Highway 99 to the new tunnel under downtown Seattle. But the tunnel doesn't open for three more weeks. So what happens in the meantime? Cairo Radio's traffic expert, Chris Sullivan, one of the most popular people <laughs> in the region, joins me now with a few ideas to help us out. You're getting a lot of what do I do questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm very popular these days. <laughs> I'm very popular. If I could help everybody with their individual commute, I'd do it. Yep. But I don't have that kind of you time. You don't have that kind of time. <laughs> so let's talk about it in the, in the big picture. So we've had warnings about traffic before, but this is like the real deal. This is like a Blue Angels day mm -hmm. every day for three weeks. That's kind of how I've been describing it. If people can think of that Friday, not the Thursday, the two practice day, but the one practice day, and where the, we just kind of just gets clustered and then it just never really releases. That's what it could be. That, that's why I'm telling people to be warned of it, primarily also because it will impact 90. It will impact 520 as yep. well. People who think, oh, I like take the Lake Bridges or I just take 405. It has the possibility to really have the regional impact that we see during these big closures. It makes me want to cry. Should we take <laughs> snacks and water and yeah, a blanket? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Seriously, because yeah. you could get stuck. So let's say you, you are an I-5 travel. You've got to use I-5 yes. to get to work, get home. What are the best alternatives? Well, the thing is that we don't know about this particular closure is because, say, the people who use 99 every day, I-5 is going to be their primary alternate, right? right? It's the biggest, has I mean, the most sense. capacity, makes sense. But say you live in Shoreline, are you going to get on at 175th? Are you going to get on at 145th? Mm -hmm. Are you going to go all the way down to South Lake Union and Bale? So we don't really know when and how far it's going to get backed up. So I-5 is your best alternative. The best thing I think I've been telling people to do if you can't telecommute or your boss has let you take an extra week of vacation or three. Can I have three weeks yeah, of vacation? Yeah, exactly, right after I took Christmas yeah, vacation or whatever, uh, is to probably leave an hour earlier. Get up an extra hour. There's nothing wrong with getting, or, you know, get up two hours earlier, go to the gym by your office, and then go to work or work out after. How much coffee have you had today, Chris? I've been up since 3.30 or 4, yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I, I'm a little caffeinated, yes. But yeah, you can get up that early if you have to. You can live yeah. for that for three for weeks. For three weeks. If I it's think it's better worth than it. sitting for two hours. In the car. If, you, if no that's good. what it turns out to be, yes. So my nightmare scenario is we're in this backup and there are accidents, which there will be, because now there's going to be increased traffic pressure on these other places Correct. that normally were not so congested. Is there a plan around that? Yes. Obviously, the state and the city of Seattle are working really hard with those IRT trucks. You see those trucks yes. out there all the time. They're going to move things, and they're counting on us, the public. We have a role to play in this thing, too. If you get in a fender bender mm -hmm. and you aren't injured and your car is drivable, in most cases they will be, if you could steer it, clear it. Get it the heck out of the way. That's Get off the advice. road. Take your pictures then or snap a quick one before you move it because the last thing you want to do is have a minor fender bender impact 10,000 people behind you. I mean, so for every good. one minute of backup, it creates, for every one minute of something is there, it creates about a 10-minute backup downstream. So it's something to think about. Wow. We have a way to be less selfish during this Think about the other guy. Think and help some other people exactly. see them in that exactly. circumstance. Okay, so um, the way it usually works in Seattle is that things go bad for a while <laughs> and then everybody goes back to normal like on day three. So we need to stick with this, right? That's, yeah, that's another work. key point is that you're right. We saw it in uh, when we closed the viaduct before as Bertha went underneath. We've seen it with expansion joint works on 90 and I-5. Everyone's like the first two or three days, everyone does what they're supposed to do and they look at the news and they're like, oh, Traffic was great. Then Wednesday, everybody goes back to work and we're done. It's over. You can't move. Don't do that. Stick with your plan for the entire three weeks if you can. I mean, you, flexibility is the key for this, not only for us, but for the city. They've got a really big role to play. If they see something happening, they've got to be mobile. That's why they've created no parking zones mm -hmm. where they've said they're going to tow with vigor. Uh, that's sure why they they're going to have officers out directing traffic at certain intersections to make sure people aren't blocking the box, make sure buses aren't blocking the box. They're wanting to move. We've got to move. And so they've got a big responsibility, and they say they're ready. We'll find out uh, on one of those days when maybe more people will use their traditional routes right. than normal, and it gets really bad. So how, um, 
how should we go about this? Should we be using apps like Waze? Should we be listening to you? How do we kind of get this real-time feel for where to go? On Is that the really a question? Day? Of course you should be listening to uh, well, me yes. in the more. No. Yes, of course. I, obviously, I use apps like Waze and Inrex, Google Maps, all those other things in addition to the, you know, the traffic coverage that I, you know, I see on King or you know, the other stations mm -hmm. as well. I, the whole idea is I try to aggregate and get a good idea, get a, get a handle, right. a baseline of what it looks like. But my, and yeah, and use the problem with using apps like Waze or sometimes they direct, and they will direct you into places that you're unfamiliar. And that can be really dangerous. Like for instance, it might not have the latest info on a road closure or a construction project that so they you send down a road through Soto and next thing you know, oh, what do you mean I'm stuck behind a, a BNSF freight right. train? I didn't know there were for tracks hours. there. Right. Exactly, so, right. or you drive into a neighborhood somewhere if you're coming through Shoreline and you're trying to backdoor off of 99, next thing you know you're in a neighborhood and there are a bunch of kids waiting for a bus and you're going 35. You just gotta be careful when you use those because you're driving in unfamiliar territory yeah. It's probably going to be raining at least one day during these three <laughs> weeks, and we've all proved that we can't drive in rain That's anyway, so which true. is funny considering our web feed. So, true. so just be careful when you use those apps, especially okay. on the speed-wise, too, when you're in an unfamiliar yes. road. I think that's the thing. If, if you're going to be late, you're just going to be late, but yeah. still be careful. So it, maybe a good idea to go out and practice a couple of these alternate We're getting close. Routes. I mean, we're right down to the deadline. If you haven't been practicing your route, you might have a little bit of trouble. You don't want Monday, the day, the first day, commuting day, the viaduct's gone, to be out there going, oh, how do you use an Orca car? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm using light rail today? Hey, wait for me as I figure out how to do this. You should have thought of that. And we've even seen some this week. I think I've seen a lot of people who live in West Seattle who, by the way, are going to take it really hard because they have very few options of getting out based on, on the right. closure. Uh, using a little bit of I-5, coming up the streets through Soto. I've kind of seen a little bit of that this week as where I think people are kind of going. So we'll see. But yeah, you use this weekend, even though 99 is going to be closed, to make an attempt to at least think about Plan where you're going and at least drive it once if you can right. just to give yourself practice so Monday isn't just like oh my gosh what do I do and then then you're stuck and then we'll listen to you because not only will you have the information during those three weeks but traffic's going to change permanently in terms of using the tunnel and things being different after this three weeks is over so just but they always say pack your patience I hate that phrase I know so I much, do too. but don't just I'll tell you what just be prepared and be less selfish. I like to say be less selfish on the road. Treat those other drivers as if your family members were in those other cars. I bet you wouldn't cut them off, and I bet you'd let them merge if you were thinking a little bit better about the driver in the other car. The zipper method, people, please. Yeah, Thank you zipper so much. all the way. <laughs> all the way. Up next, how you can throw an awesome eco-conscious dinner party that makes zero waste. We'll be right back.